Have you ever taken a moment to consider just how odd it is that humans live in such elaborate societies? This story begins at a time before humans existed, when Southern Africa was a forest. But something happened that paved the way for humans to thrive, and eventually we evolved into a species with the most complex societies on Earth. As the first humans began appearing on the scene, the environment was hot and wet, and food was plentiful. But around two million years ago, the climate started to shift. The world began cooling down and drying out. Lush forests were transformed into less productive grasslands, and the species that lived there had to adapt to survive. As the climate continued to dry out over the next million years, early man ventured out, spreading through Africa, Europe and Asia. One of the key drivers for this expansion was this new African savanna, which had far less food than the forests that existed before. Food scarcity meant ever wider searches for resources, drawing people further and further away from southern Africa. Unpicking the mystery behind what these groups of people may have looked like is the key to understanding how our modern societies evolved. But there's no way of knowing what these early societies were like. Fossils are perfect for learning an animal's age or when it existed, or its brain size, diet, gender, or possible cause of death. But what fossils won't tell you are the relationships that these animals had. So what can scientists look at to understand early human societies? Well, baboons. Specifically, guinea baboons. Alongside humans, guinea baboons are the only surviving primates whose arrival on the evolutionary scene coincides with the emergence of the African savanna. This means that both these baboons and early humans face the same environmental challenges and so may have evolved similar adaptations to deal with them. Guinea baboons have an unusual social structure, even for baboons. Other baboon species typically form a hierarchy, with dominant males snagging and defending the most fertile females. Relationships between them last long enough for the male to be sure the child is his. Guinea baboons, on the other hand, form stable, long-lasting relationships between males and females alike. Guinea baboons live in what's called a nested multi-level social organisation, which may be a mouthful to say, but looks like this. One male has a strong social bond with one to five females. This is called a one male unit. Several one male units come together to form larger parties of roughly 10 to 30 individuals. Within a party, individuals form their own social bonds with each other. Finally, these parties occasionally come together with other parties to form a large gang. The bonds between members gets weaker as the levels increase, which means the closest bonds a guinea baboon has is with the members of its one male unit. The weakest bonds are with those who are only in their gang. What they have created is essentially a community. Let's look at the one male unit, as guinea baboons display another significant social trait. Males and females form stable, long-lasting social bonds with each other. This is unlike other baboon species, which operate in a colder, more utilitarian way. Males are only interested in fertile females, and when the females are no longer reproductively viable, the males lose interest. With guinea baboons, we see something more human. Males are close to, groom, and maintain a bond with the females in the one male unit, whether or not they're reproductive. Sounds almost like love. The final social trait guinea baboons offer insight into is the relationships between males. In most species, competition between males is fierce, for whoever comes out dominant gets the pick of the best females. Weirdly, with guinea baboons, males actually get along with each other. Rather than competing, they form bonds with each other. They greet each other, 
engage in mutual grooming and spend time with each other. The benefit to living in a society whose members get along is that without having to be aggressive towards each other, everyone is less stressed, especially when it comes to mating. Scientists believe that these social traits, the forming of multi-level communities, strong male-female relationships, and kinship amongst other males, would have been necessary in early humans for them to evolve the societies we see today. We can use guinea baboons as an analogy to humans, as a species that is alive today and evolved under the same environmental pressures as early humans, we gain a unique insight into the social tactics that humans may have employed. These unusual characteristics, to cooperate, to love, to tolerate and accept, are often used as proof of our separation from the wild nature of beasts. But from the guinea baboon we see a potential window into our own evolutionary past.